So uh, we'll basically metal. remember the shapes guy. Yeah, so memory metals are really cool materials and you can go ahead and uh, take one of these memory metal pieces okay. and just coil them around your finger and do any weird shape that you want, but don't tie a knot in them, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> uh, once you have anything, just like drop it in the hot water and see what happens. Yeah. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on, hold on, this is <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, try it again. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Well, so, uh, so you may have heard it. Wow. And the secret behind those memory metals is that they have two different faces. Um, wait, 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 two sorry. different solid faces. So you probably all know about liquid phase trans uh, uh, tra phase transitions from solid to liquid phase and liquid to gas phase. Uh, but this material has two different um, solid phases. A cold phase and the hot temperature phase. And in a cold temperature phase, you can bend them and change the um, change the shape of them. And if you go back to the hot temperature phase, they go back to the shape that they remember that they were trained before. And you can actually use that not only for demonstration purposes here, but um, for uh, medical um, applications or glasses. You probably have seen glasses before that you can just bend around and they go back to the original shape. I broke many glasses in my life, so I actually wear them myself. You can oh, bend them around, dang. get into wow, any cool. kind of sport accident or whatever, they just fall off and uh, they never bend. There is someone um, who created a shirt made of, of these memory metals, really? and the shirt um, automatically ro rolls up the sleeves when it gets hot outside. Automatically? Wow. Automatically? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> How much is that? <laughs> um, I think it's pretty expensive probably. Um, there's an artist who used these memory metals to create a sculpture that changes its position depending on the temperature outside. So it would, really? um, yeah, it's the same sculpture, just a sculpture, just at different temperatures. Wow. And uh, depending on the amount of nickel and titanium that you mix together, you can change the uh, temperature at which this phase transition happens. So, Sweet. That is the secret behind it. If you want, you can take a few of those memory um, metals with you. Any, what, what kind of water is that? This is just regular hot water. Hot water. Hot water. There is nothing special about it. But you, wouldn't, you don't want to put your fingers inside and take the tweezers to take them out. <laughs> and we have this little... Um, <laughs> they look nice on you. A little information sheet that explains it, and you can try it at home. Try that. All right. Wow. That's sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, tell us that you know, and I will ask you a question on this topic. Please. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's armor. <laughs> cutting, okay, cutting it down to nano is fine. Okay, so... Oh, oh uh, my god. <laughs> Does nano mean millions? Billions? Or trillions? Million. Which one? Million. No, it's no, it's billion. <laughs> oh, it's billion, okay. Okay, then I will ask you another one. question on this topic. One more chance. Okay. <laughs> Why do scientists need special tools to work at nanoscale? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you have another question? Yeah, why can't you work on nanoscale with your it's hands? It's so right? small, you can't see yeah, it. It's so small. It's so small. It's so small. Oh okay, boy. You have no chance. Just okay. turn the wheel. Turn, turn the, wheel, the wheel, buddy. Okay. There we go. Are you Vanna White? <laughs> Remember Vanna White? I don't think she got that. <laughs> I don't think she got that. Oh, wow. What'd you win, buddy? Oh. It's a magnet. Hold on. Let me get in. Whoa. Oh, magnet. Magnet. I just want a magnet. Very nice. magnet. Hey, we're dealing with magnets right now, too. Yeah. We're doing right. Thank you so right. much. Just go through it and then we're ready. So, what we're, what we're talking about here are liquid crystals. Liquid crystals are uh, used in a lot of applications like uh, computer displays or other screens. And the way they work is that they change color depending on different things like temperature or, uh, in the case of computers, electric fields. So, if you would look down here, we have two different liquid crystals in it. If you, uh, these respond to temperature. So if you um, so put your hand down, um, oh. it'll change color. This one also responds to temperature, but it responds to a different temperature. Oh. So you have to hold your hand down a little longer. Oh. 
you can use liquid crystals actually as oh, it goes away real fast. And in here we have we have a, uh, something that has been collecting heat, but we don't know what's inside. We can use the liquid crystal oh. to reveal what's what's in there. Whoa! Whoa! That's sweet. That's cool. So we can repeat that with with different different shapes, and we can understand what's what's going on inside. So there are, are researchers here at UW that use liquid crystals to as uh, sensors. And what they'll do is they'll take they'll take the liquid crystal and they'll be able to detect things like cells, proteins, or uh, things like a nerve agent like sarin. And they'll use that to they'll use liquid crystals to find that there's something there. Yeah. That's the, like, the sense. These are the sensors in. It? Yeah. So actually, liquid crystals are are kind of like liquids and kind of like solids. Mm -hmm. they, they're like solids because they have um, they have point, they're all pointed in the same direction. But they're like liquids because they don't have any positional correlation. They're all they're at different different positions. So. All right. They can also use Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. All right, kid. All right, thank you. So I've got two balls. They're the same. It doesn't matter which one you grab in which hand. Okay. And when I count to three, I want you to drop them both into these two tubes. Oh, man, this is going to be hard. So one, two, three. Look at your hand. Whoa. All right. Oh. So what do you notice is the difference in these two cases? Oh, this one keeps bouncing. This, this one, one keeps doesn't. bouncing. Now, the balls are the same. I already showed you. These so the metal is the same. Are the same. Right. It's the metal on the bottom that's different. And if we pull these balls out and we take a look at the tops, at the surfaces of these two cylinders, what do you notice is the difference? This is really smooth. Right. So this one on the left that kept bouncing is really smooth, and that's the amorphous metal. Right. And the one, I guess on my right, actually, is stainless steel and has lots of pits and dents in it. Right. And these pits and dents are from the ball hitting the surface of the stainless steel cylinder. And if we want to know why these two metals act differently, we have to look down at the atomic structure. So the first cylinder, the one that has all the dents and the balls stop fairly fast on, it's stainless steel, and in stainless steel, um, all of the atoms are about the same size, like you see in the cylinder, and so they pack really nicely and neatly in an organized manner. And similar to the way that if you're lining up after recess or after a fire drill, um, these atoms are all lined up nicely, and so they're able to slide past one another very easily. So when the, the ball hits the surface of the stainless steel, it transfers some of its kinetic energy into slipping these atoms past one another, and then, because the ball is losing kinetic energy, it stops. However, with the amorphous metal, uh, this amorphous metal in particular is made up of five different kinds of atoms, and they all have different sizes. And so they pack together really tightly, but not in an organized way. And so, just like being in a really crowded room, um, or at a concert, or something like that, these atoms aren't able to slide past each other very easily at all. And so when the ball hits the surface of the amorphous metal, the atoms aren't able to move. And so the ball isn't going to lose that kinetic energy to this amorphous metal surface, and so it keeps bouncing for longer. Um, so if we do it again, Okay. We see again the stainless steel, um, a lot of that energy is being lost to uh, slipping atoms in the stainless steel surface, making dents. And it takes the amorphous metal uh, longer for the ball to stop, but it does stop eventually, so what might be making it stop if it's not transferring kinetic energy to the amorphous metal surface? What else is the ball hitting? Uh, Right, so it's hitting the tube and it's losing some kinetic energy that way. What else is in the tube that it's hitting? Air. Air, so it's going to lose some kinetic energy to the air also. And then, do you hear something? You hear the ball bouncing, right? And so, um, that's sound waves, so it's acoustic energy. So also, you're losing some of the kinetic energy to the acoustics. So it's, it's going to stop eventually, not more and forever. Um, but they use amorphous metal for uh, a, vari a variety of applications. You can use it in the heads of golf clubs because, you know, which one of these situations do you want to have if you're out on the golf course? You want this one. Right, right. It's not going to help your aim, but your ball will go farther. Um, they can also use it for surgical knives because they don't dull as quickly as regular stainless steel knives. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, kid.